Welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. John Lennon. John Lennon and Yoko Ono. <laughs> Now, this is Acorns for Peace Week now, so here goes. Are you ready? Find the camera there. Oh, no. <laughs> OK, go. Now, if you plant them, you get trees. <laughs> Not fast enough. Tell me, what's the... Let me help you. No I... damage, no damage. Am I allowed to... Oh, uh... no. yes. Excuse us, won't you? Yes, do have some, David. <laughs> now, tell me, what's the significance? Have one of those. Well, acorn is a seed, and seed is a seed of life and hope, and maybe if some people planted them, they'd hope we lived that long. <laughs> and only God can make a tree, didn't someone say? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Come to <laughs> Very Front good. row, come on, cheer up now. And, uh, yeah, I know you've been here all day. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 Happy birthday, Queen. Well, <laughs> if, if, uh, if viewers at home would like to write in for their one free acorn, <laughs> don't. Enough. See if it's selling on the stage. <laughs> now, this is the record which, we'll, can't edit it, can which, we'll, which we'll come to in a moment. OK. Uh, we're going to come to this. You didn't trust... I've got, I've got a I copy know, of your record. I think you do this like I'm doing, you see, I when see. it's on American telly. Well, there you are. There it is. There they are. And I, I want to talk about this. Let me just... Since I last saw you, bring myself up to date. Yes. When I last saw you, one of the things you were doing was very keenly this thing of knocking um, nails into pieces of wood, right? Uh, Which I didn't do. That was a piece of yoga, was a piece of art that, that was brought along. Hello. To show you, yeah. and to uh, explain concept art, I suppose. Mm. But we were we were knocking, David. Correct. You were, and that was part of just concept art, really, and part of the pieces. I brought you a wee box Here's another, piece. another piece, a present. <laughs> to David, a box of smile. Mm -hmm. We give him a lot of gear, he throws it away after. <laughs> <laughs> You'll regret it. Still looking for his Picassos. <laughs> Sit, get it? Yeah, get it. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> you know you'd like it. Oh, I adore it. It's the nicest thing I've ever seen. self Thank you very much indeed, I shall carry it with me at all times. I like your equipment. Yes, yes we've got a little record player here because we wanted to play a bit of your record. You're now. a bit low, are you? Yes, it's a rather cheap record player. I hope they can't see the name of the manufacturer on it. But the, uh, no, because you did the record where you were both photographed on the cover fairly... Uh, naturally. Naturally. And you did that for what reason? Well, the story is, uh, before Yoko and I became involved, I was going to produce her as a, an artist, you know, as a, a... She wanted to make records. And her work was all this uh, pure and simple and white. So I thought... I was in India. Remember that? I was in <laughs> India. And I was thinking a lot, you know. And I was thinking, uh, what would be the best L LP cover for her? to get over the concept of a worker. So I thought, aha, make it. And I wrote this little letter to her and I gave her a drawing, uh, which she thought, oh, hello, what? She thought I was coming for me, you see. <laughs> so then when I got home and we got involved, I thought the most natural thing was for us both to do it, because we both made the record together. So we did it, you know. And had it just been her, there wouldn't have been anything. You know. Oh, you can have nude women, that's all right, but not men, ooh. You know. So I didn't know what I was doing till it happened. And, there and I'm pleased. And it's very interesting where various record companies chose to place the price tag. Yeah. But then yeah. It was in a brown paper mm. bag in some part of the States. So. <laughs> it's only for 10 quid on the black market, so... Is it really? Mm. That's it, now, the, this is rather respectable, though once... Well, she was reflecting on where we were then in Two Virgins. The music was us meeting... But why did you call it Two Virgins? Because we... Two virgins. Yes, but, I mean, it's, uh, you take every bit of poetry, literally. We were two virgins, conceptually. conceptually. We met on... Uh, our minds met on the music of the record, and our bodies met on the cover of the record. And it was just a concept. So this... That was how we were then. We considered our meeting as us two virgins meeting, right? You know, and this is what was happening then, you know. And we were in hospital having my miscarriage, and we'd been arrested on the other side. 
And you've been rested on the other side. So we, we, yeah. we're like a newspaper, you know. Yeah. I mean, like Beatle records are the same. They reflect what we're doing now, and you reflect what you're doing now. Mm -hmm. Only we're doing it literally. But you, but you do share with us a great deal of your lives, don't well, you? I mean, uh, you're... Everybody's well, hiding everybody with these walls around them. What have we got to hide, you know? Well, nothing That's after that. So, book, right. <laughs> but I mean, what, what, what about it, you know? What are we hiding from each other? Everybody's so frightened that they'll see... You know, don't, I must do this in case he sees how weak I am or how strong I am or whatever. Everybody's just got these walls around them. That's true. And we, if we can, we've broken down a few barriers between us, mm. you know, which we had to do because we had two big egos, mm. two individual artists. And in spite of and with love, we overcame that. Mm. So what we're doing is sort of trying to share what we've experienced with everybody else that we can communicate with and say, uh, this, you know, it worked for us and it was hard. And this is, we're open, you know, we're not hiding anything as best we can. And it doesn't hurt, and it's very comfortable. So why are you so frightened? And this new record, the one with, the, with you in the, uh, in the hospital, yes. has on one side of it uh, Cambridge 1969. Yes. Which... This will get you. This... <laughs> yes. This is a... A live we, performance by yes. John Yilka. I'm on guitar. <laughs> I don't get it. Oh, 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 o
You know, but so we're reading about ourselves like everybody else reads about it. They did this, and he's staying in the room. Oh, he's had his bed taken off him, you know. And so we thought we'd sing it, you know. Instead of singing, we'll gather lilacs. But you do that on the next record. Yeah, she's standing there, you know. Well, you know, I think the concept of uh, uh, something extraordinary, you know, uh, is all wrong because uh, that's where the competition comes in and aggressiveness comes in. And if we just start to learn that. Uh, Everybody's extraordinary, you know, and everything that we do is beautiful. And uh, we're all in the same world, you see. In other words, you're saying, well, uh, we are sharing a lot of, la lot of uh, life with uh, other people. But uh, all of us are in the same world, uh, stuck in the same world, like being married, you know, <laughs> in this one small globe. And so we're together anyway. So it's not a matter of sharing. We're sharing anyway, but, uh, you know, just realizing it. <laughs> There's a couple more messages, too, I want to ask you about. There's that sweet card you sent me the other day that I, I need an explanation for. Do uh, you, you really need all these explanations? Well, yes, I know. I, I thought he was clever, you know. <laughs> no, I know. No, no, no. I just, I just love to hear you talk and explain these things. Okay. And we're going to hear more in two minutes. Welcome back. No, the message I had from John and Yoko the other day when we were planning the program was a message with a nice picture that said, love plus peace equals bagism. I need to know more, John. What's bagism? What's bagism? Okay, well, it's right. Uh, it's a, uh, I don't know what they call it, like, like a newspaper, a tag for what we all do. We're all in a bag, you know, and we realize that we came from two bags. You know? I was in this pop band, bag going round and round in my little clique, you know, and she was in her little avant-garde clique going round and round, and you're in your little telly clique, and <laughs> they're in the, you know? And we all sort of come out and look at each other now and then, but we don't communicate, and we all intellectualize about it. There's no barrier between art, music, poetry, but we're still all, I'm a rock and roller, he's a poet, so we just came up with the words, so as you'd ask us what bagism is, and we'd say, we're all in a bag, baby. Well, now, you've, you've got in a bag, you've got in a sack. Well, we got out of one bag, and then you yeah. just keep moving from bag you've to bag. You've got a bag there with you. Yes. Now, what do you do with it? Well, sometimes we get in it, and sometimes other people get in it. You know. It's, you know, to add a sort of, uh, you know, this life is speed up so much, and, and uh, the whole world is getting tenser and tenser because uh, things are uh, just going so fast, you know. So it's nice to sort of slow down the, the rhythm of the whole world, just to make it peaceful. So like the uh, bag, when you get in, you see that it's very peaceful. And your movements are sort of limited, you know. You walk, uh, well, you, you can walk around uh, on the street in a bag. And it, can you? Yes, if people uh, did, got, did interviews for jobs yeah. in a bag, they wouldn't get turned away because they were black or green or long hair. Yeah. It, get you only get, it's bag. total communication. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, if that was uh, specified when you interviewed uh, the people that you wanted to employ, it had you have this prejudice, and the people had to wear a bag, then you'd only judge them on what they communicated to you, and you, you wouldn't have to think, oh, he's it's wearing black suede, is he? Uh, don't like it. He's wearing, <laughs> yeah, he's right, wearing you know, Windsor bag. It's like <laughs> total communication, it's like telepathy, or two people in the dark, or a uh, baby in the womb communicating, mm -hmm. or... Anything, yeah. But now, if you were to get into that bag now, if you were to get in, Dave? Yes, Dave. If I was to get in, if we were all if to get, we were in, to get what in, what would it do for us? Well, you'd have to see, wouldn't you? Yes, I mean, it does. Yes. It's like uh, asking what would happen if I do that, you know? Mm. It depends, really. Well, you I'm have glad to find you did that. that well, I'm glad you did well, that. Well, that will happen. I made you glad, is it? Yeah. But, so. but you said, Yoko, you might have a special announcement. What was that? No, no we were saying that, but it's well, not. Really, can you do it? Does it um, work? I'm not sure, is it? Does it not work? Really, no. It doesn't work, so we're not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, don't you think that uh, we should do the bag, you know? Well, how about if you got in the bag and interviewed us, yes, you yes. see, and see the difference? Mm -hmm. It's amazing. We did a press conference in Vienna, and they're pretty square over there. And they all got in the bag? No, we were in the bag that time. So. <laughs> and all the press came in, sort of expecting Peter John and his famous wife, and we were in the bag singing and humming, and all they were asking is, what are you wearing? <laughs> Is great. And they're all sort of holding mics to this bag, you know, <laughs> and asking it how it felt and was it glad to be here. 
And were you really John Lennon and Yoko? Yeah, but does it have to be a big enough bag so they can't see you at all or only can't see your shoes? Or oh, well, it depends. For convenience, you'd have slim bags and fatty, loose bags, you know. And I think you should launch the bags along with this record, Life of the Well, we, we try it. Yoko launched it a long time ago in New York, and there's some place there that's doing it full time, you know. But they get people go in and bag for a bit. That's how I met her. I heard this woman was having an art show and that there was going to be old people in bags. So I thought, aye, hey, aye. Hey. So I was thinking, great, great, as long as they don't put me in bags with a stranger. Now well, there they were in bags. Isn't and it was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and was that how you met in bags? Well, we didn't do it, did we? Because we were strangers. How did you meet? Uh, well, she had this art show and I went along. I heard there was uh, a sort of happening event going on. And it was uh, something about bags, people are all going to be in bags. And I liked the idea of going in the bag. So I put the sheet over when it, the kid again, you know, just nice. And you can peep out, you know. And so I thought, that'd be nice sitting there and watching all other people. But then I thought, ah, but say they all get out mm -hmm. and leave me. Anyway, we just met and uh, we looked on the hammer and the nail in and... Uh, what did you say to me? Oh, an imaginary nail, that was it. Mm -hmm. I was just going to ask her to hammer one in. It was the night before the show and she says, five shillings, please. Mm -hmm. So I said, can I hammer an imaginary nail in? And uh, I didn't have any money like the Queen, you know. And, uh, <laughs> I said, well, I'll give you an imaginary five shillings and hammer an imaginary nail in. And we met like that. <laughs> and you've been going around together in an imaginary way? We have sense? been in this imaginary world we live in. Yeah. And, and tell me, how has this thing gone of these sleep-ins you've been having? In, you had one in Canada and one in Holland, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. So those are what, to draw attention? Or peace, you know, we're trying to sell peace like a product. You know, and sell it like people sell soap or soft drinks, you know. Mm. And the only way to get people aware that peace is possible and it isn't just uh, inevitable to have violence, not just war, all forms of violence. People just accept it and think, oh, they did it, or Harold Wilson did it, or Nixon did it. And they're always scapegoating people. And it isn't Nixon's fault. We're, we're all responsible for everything that goes on. Mm. You know, and we're all responsible for Biafra and Hitler and everything. And the militant types always said, Oh, we must give the people the power so they can stop all this. You know, but the people have the power. What we want to tell them is you have the power. It's like when you're a kid, you're, all kids are artists. Until some guy says when you're about 11, you're no good, you go do woodwork, you know? And the whole society is built like that, of telling people they're no good and we have to do it for you. And it's a con game, you know? And people have full potential. If they're working at full potential, they wouldn't need violence. They'd to be channeled, you know? And we're just saying, sell peace. Anybody interested in peace, just stick it in the window. It's simple, but it lets somebody else know that you want peace too. Because you feel alone if you're the only one thinking, wouldn't it be nice if there was peace and nobody's getting killed? So advertise your, yourself that you're for peace, if you believe in it. Even if it's down to just say, having it in your own window, you know, like they have political candidates name it. Only you sell it every day, don't just sell it every Easter and every time that we remember one of the wars. You know, and we all have a big palaver and a circus about we killed somebody and we were, we're all right now, you know. But it's going on every day, it's going on every city and every home. You know, the violence between you and I, or she and I, and, and you know, just all forms of violence, the mine and everything. And people want peace, you know? And you've got to sell it and sell it and sell it. So we do the bed in, and they'll say, what, they're in bed, what's this, you know? And all we're doing really is donating our holiday. You know, we give time, it's not, nothing else, you know, so we, it's more convenient for us to stay in one spot than to go around doing press conferences. Mm. So we think of a gimmick or something that is so functional. It's a logical extension, really, of the make love, not war thing. Yeah, sure, I mean, that, that's turned into a <laughs> cliché. Yeah. You know, make bed, not yeah, war, you say. Just the same, make love, not war, you know. A thou shalt not kill, you know. The joke is it was all cliché bit and everybody's hip and saying, oh, yeah, make love, not war. Now it's kill the pigs. Mm. And all the students are playing establishment games the establishment of condom into fighting over parks in Berkeley. You know, it's like a bully at school. He keeps poking you till you hit him back. But what do you want to do next, the pair of you? Make peace, sir. Mm. Sell it, that's all we're going to do. Whatever we do will be for peace. Huh? The age of advertisement. You know, if we next time yeah, the record comes out, we'll have peace If it's on. the age of advertisement, though, and you want to sell this thing, if people don't uh, dig or understand what you're doing, is that important to you? It if you're selling, important. it is important. The thing important. is, if we're selling a simple truth like peace is an alternative to what's going on, the reason they don't dig it or understand it is because they're so conditioned to believe that it's inevitable and man is a violent animal that always kills things. Mm. 
You know, and we always will have it like but that. But is it too simple a trick? Well, what is too simple about not me not killing you mm. now? Well, I think that's a good idea on the whole. <laughs> but you know, I mean, but in, you in general terms, everybody so, prepares okay, peace. Okay, so what but are you doing about? It's your responsibility. Yeah, but there must be. To, yeah, but then what do you do? I mean, it's an obvious example, but is just to say peace. While it's great to say that, is it not too You've simple? Got to start I mean, somewhere. in 1939, if you just say peace, 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 Hitler marches everywhere. But if, if in 1918, when he was born, the the system had been saying peace to him and not telling him he's a a low class little plumber or whatever he was, he wouldn't have turned into Hitler. And people people had a choice of Hitler and some other guy, and they chose Hitler. People chose Hitler. He didn't con him. He was a good performer. We didn't con anybody. We chose him. You know, Hitler and Germany was a manifestation of all our violence. Not Germans or Hitler. But Hitler would have been just the same. Oh, Hitler the day before, if, if we got up and said, peace, peace Hitler, we might not have worked. I'm talking about the whole system. So let's start now, so as the next 2,000 years, we have few, fewer and fewer Hitlers. Because you've got to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. If you'd have started in 1900, it might have not. If people have started thinking that way and made their feelings known to government, I mean, our fathers made it known to the boss by striking and holding up banners and marching. Now, the kids are trying to do the same thing with the marching bit. It's nowhere, you know, there, nobody takes any notice unless the vi there's violence on the fringe of the march. And the establishment now know how to handle marches. It's good games for them. You know, so you've got to use today's methods, which is selling. But I... Yes, I think so much of what you say makes a great deal of sense, but don't you think, in fact, the bags and, and all of that and the naked record sleeves get in the way of your well, message rather than yeah. helping it? We came to the piece after the bags and everything, anyway. Mm -hmm. you know. The bags, it's like me suddenly saying, well, all you need is love was for peace, and it was, basically, and I bring out the record again and just put peace on it. Now, the bag thing is a piece of Yoko's from a few years back, you know, the various things we use. We use things that, you're asking us about bags. Mm. Even if you don't want to understand about this total communication, or whatever we're saying intellectually about it, you understand though, here we are talking about bags, okay? Mm. And there were those two on the front of the Daily Mirror for a change, sitting, two, the, the news that day was two people were in bed on the honeymoon. Mm. That was the news, like, okay, if that's Sensation. a laugh, that's good. Sensation, it's, yeah. it's a change, and it's, a, it's a, a breakdown to show people that something else happens besides another fence was or built killing, you know. or killing you know. and we can change it and politicians only do things when you tell them otherwise they just sit in control they have such a hard time keeping their power from each other because they're all mm -hmm. fighting for it but they can't spend time doing things for people you know i mean if you look at our history anyway what have they done nothing you know? and it's not because they half of them don't want to they can't you've got this job there's certain things you can't do or you lose it, or you're off the TV. Okay, you have to compromise. A politician's got to compromise a million times more, and they won't do anything until you say, we're not playing, you know, we're not going to play your game, and we stop. But the trouble is, will it work in the last well, result? And, and the thing is, I think it's marvellous well, idealism. Well, but the thing, you've got to have faith, you've got to make, make it work. work. But you your system, yeah, your it's like, tomorrow, your oh, system we're going to have a nice day tomorrow. Let's not bevy too much, and if we don't eat too much, then we won't have to have the, the seltzer after. It's like that. We'll plan tomorrow because I need the strength tomorrow to do a lot of work. Okay, so we plan the future like that. Just think about it. So there's, oh, that's it. oh, they killed a few thousand more in Ireland, did they? You know, we've got to, I mean, we respond. We're not saying you did it or they did it. Us too, we came to the, it's our responsibility. Do not make it happen, you know. And if this is the best, sorry, mm -hmm. no. You know, what I mean is, you know, that intellectual cynicism, you know, is the most dangerous thing because that's sort of like, you know, negative thinking. And you, you're saying, what if, but it's almost like wishful thinking. Don't wish for it, you know. And the thing is, somebody said, well, what would you do if uh, tomorrow you wake up and uh, in the morning you, uh, you read the papers and it just says, well, a war started somewhere, you know, third world war, something started. Well, you see, that's not going to happen because we're not going to let it happen, you know. But well, you we can't have stop it, People have the power to... Who, who is making who's it then? People. Who is doing it's it? It's always people. If Britain declares war on Ireland, who did it? Wilson but, or him but, or no, he? But the point who is, the point is, surely, with your, th with your system, the great thing about your system is that while a few people can start a war, 
every single person in the world has got to do the same as you before your system no, no, will stop. No, just enough of us. Yeah. Uh, oh, just yeah, everybody that be first. Be, and I know you're sort of one of, a bit cynical, and so even while you're cynical, you can still make positive moves. You know, if you're cynical about the clothes you wear, you're still going to wear it because it suits the job you do. Mm. You know, so be cynical, but still make a positive move and play the game. Have a game of chess with me. Be, and be cynical about chess because it's a game. But let's have the game and let's have some fun and let's work towards something good. Rather than be cynical and say, I told you, another war. Because that's the choice you have. Now, I'm not, I'm not really cynical about what you're doing at all. I just no, don't. I mean, cynical is what will what, what, happen if I'll, tomorrow. Can we really do it? There's I'll, so many of them. I'll have we you put throw them in the power. remainder of the acorns. Okay. We I'll put them in power, man. It's it's the, our kids are going to put the next lot in power if they're not told there's an alternative in us. Because they're all people, you know, they're only people in government. They're only somebody that we, cho we gave the responsibility of telling us how many roads we could have because we're so insecure, we don't believe we could manage our own road system. You know, so we have, that's his responsibility and we can blame him every time we fall off the road or every time the, ro the bridge falls down. And now you know, for instance... Are you trying to get... Is it over? We, no, it's okay. not over yet, but the time, they're signalling madly that the time is up. We've got to stop there. You're both splendid preachers. Thank you for coming and joining us. Wouldn't you all like to say thank you? Thank you.